As I said, our fish room is in our living room. And I love the way that lighting plays on the wall behind the tank. As you can see. Okay, we're looking at the corner tank, that pie-shaped 55-gallon tank. And I just wanted to show you something before I start cleaning up these tanks. The Amazon sword plant in here has uh, sent up what I call the flower. And I just had to break this off. It is so strong, it's more than the height of the tank. Actually, it goes out of the water by about six or eight inches. And for whatever reason, I think it stops the, uh, it's not making babies, it's a flower, a strange looking flower. And so I had to cut it off. I could not cut that with my uh, scissor type stuff. I had to go down there with my hand. It is, I mean, it is so tough. You have to break it like a piece of celery. And I just had to show you that before we got into some other things here. And just to give you a better picture of what that is, that's the flowers I'm talking about. And there's a bunch of them there, but uh, strange looking stuff. Strange looking stuff. A couple of things going on here in the corner tank that I make note of. Uh, not the least of which is the cycle that some plants have. So for example, the tanks will have no duckweed at all. And then months, months later, with no duckweed to start from, it seems, all of a sudden duckweed appears and eventually starts multiplying to the point where it's blocking out the light. Now I just cleaned out a f fishnet full of duckweed here. Uh, and then the other thing that happens, you remember my corkscrew valve over in the left hand side where those red sore tails are getting around the algae tabs right now. Uh, they were doing very well and all of a sudden I'm losing their leaves <clears throat> and they're getting buried behind uh, that kabamba there on the left. But uh, I gotta worry about that. I'm gonna be straightening this tank out shortly. But uh, those are two things that have changed recently. I'm trying to open up the center a little bit more. And you see that beautiful Amazon plant in the center really has taken on uh, a lot of the space, the space in this tank. Not that the fish mind, but uh, it's uh, doing well. And it's interesting, as I've said before, there's three different types of Amazon sword plants. In the distant back, you see some leaves that are right up to the top. And that's one type of plant. And the leaves are all that big. So whatever this tank is, whether it's 22 inches or 36 inches, I'm not sure. Uh, those leaves grow to the top and are floating at the top, as you can see. But then right in front of it, you have a medium-leaved plant that doesn't get any higher than what you see here. And then, <clears throat> and I don't see it right now, but there was an even smaller one that never really got more than a couple inches high down here where the fish are after that algae tab. The uh, Madagascar lace plant is doing well. It's got about eight or ten leaves there right now and uh, it's a very dark green this time around. It sort of faded a little bit but it's got long leaves that get almost to the top. Again, maybe something that, as you see it above that bright lime green banana plant leaves, uh, it's got narrow leaves and then they sort of spread out and get wider. Don't know what that's about. Anyway, we've got to straighten this tank out a little bit, take off some of those leaves that are getting uh, worn out as you see right there in the center. And uh, the fish are doing very well, thank you. As you can see, very active. And uh, on the glass there, you have that Indian algae eater that we had moved out to the half barrel pond in the garden. 
We folded that pond down here in South Jersey just two weeks ago as weather started getting uh, colder at night and moved uh, the platies into the boat tank you're going to see in just a minute and literally a hundred babies of platies and guppies into the office tank which are so too small to even to see but uh, you can see all the activity here as my wife said it's getting to be a very colorful tank oh the other thing we did here and I don't know if you're going to be able to see them or not but we've got some black platies. They're babies that are growing up, were growing up in the office tank. And uh, there's about a dozen or more of them. I don't know if you're going to see them or not. I'm trying to focus in on them for you. And so to make some room in that tank for the ones that were coming in uh, from the outdoor pond, I moved them over here. And they've grown quite a bit even in the week that they've been in here now. And it's funny because the ta tank can be kind of dark and you'll see these dots moving around, white dots. And you finally realize, as you can see right here, that that's the face of that black platy. And there is one of those fully grown over here. There it is going, just disappeared back into the plants on me. Sorry about that. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly where they came from. They were born in the office tank. And uh, like I say, every place I look here, I can see them. I don't know if you can. And the other thing that's happening now is along with that Indian algae eater that I was just showing you, and that's a big one. We've got three of those, two in the other tank and one here. Uh, there are three other smaller ones that weren't growing at all. And when I got rid of that big one, the other three started really growing and so you just saw one hiding there and he's back up here and they look very full so they're getting well fed with the algae and whatever is in, else is in this tank and uh, all of a sudden they're starting to get bigger so I don't know if I'm comfortable with them that being that big in this tank and you can see down here there's the, the one I was just talking about one of the three And they do a good job. I don't have any algae problems in this particular tank. So anyway, that's where it is before we get to work on it. Let me switch over to the bow tank and show you how overgrown that is at this particular point in time. Now this is the bow tank and as you can see it is totally overgrown, which I've shown you a little bit before, but this has been about two weeks since, two or three weeks since the last video. and. The plants have just become a jungle. Uh, the fish don't seem to mind. They're just going in and out of them. And they're growing all very well. Those uh, red platies you see in the front, they came in from the outdoor pond. They had a summer vacation out there, about six or eight of them. And so I've got to get into this tank and really r do something with it. I wish I could do like Bruce's tanks are. And that is very clear and the garden is very organized and a lot of clear space. I can't do that. I can't get rid of these plants. And uh, I like a more planted tank. Uh, his plants look gorgeous and I've taken his uh, practice of fertilization into this and that's why you're seeing them the way they are. But in the center you see that one I keep talking about that we what strands of very disappointingly up at Discus Madness up in uh, North Jersey and that has just keep growing and growing and growing. Best purchase I've ever made <laughs> really in plants and you can see what it's doing here. It's taking over the whole tank but it's very colorful and so I've been giving away uh, bunches of this to some friends who are amazed at the growth here and you also see here one of those Indian algae eaters right dead center there. I can't make it out in, oh yeah, there it is, uh, in my viewfinder here. But uh, that's the second of three. There's two of them in this tank that I moved out of the corner tank at some point in time. And they're huge. Um, don't know if I want to keep them because they are so big and they do root around the plants uh, and they will actually eat the plants. Uh, so they're well fed right now with other stuff so that's not a problem but uh, 
we'll see what has to happen with that. And so this is the before stage and hopefully uh, as soon as I get through with this recording I'll get into this tank straight out a little bit and show you what it can look like later as you've seen in the past. It's, it's amazing all these videos I do uh, over the years I have on my hard drive on a computer. And so I can go back and look at this tank or the other tanks that, that were before it and see what they look like over the years. It's amazing how different they look from one year to the next as different plants thrive and different fish thrive. This used to be a heavily angelfish tank. Now there's a couple angelfish in here but there's not the ten big angels that we used to have. Uh, so anyway, we'll be back shortly give you more of a view of exactly what this tank looks like after harvesting as I may call it. There's one of those angels now. The Italian valves on either side here are really doing very well. They're thriving and multiplying, and so both corners of the tank have that big plant that grows to the top of the tank, and you can see it over here on the left also. So they're sort of a balance, uh, much close as I come to gardening. Uh, but anyway, back to you later. Now, as I showed you just moments ago, that overgrown tank, and this is uh, with the plants move back trimmed and replanted so nothing came out of this tank well there were some leaves that were trimmed off but look how different it looks with the variety of color and shapes and patterns and also the fish are much easier to see now that they've got more swimming space out front as opposed to hiding in the plants back and now if you look at that plant that we keep talking about that we got it disc madness this is now getting as big as the one was in that tank that I described before at disc madness where they trimmed off like seven of the branches that they sold for like nine dollars and I was so disappointed at the time but I was wrong it really did come out very well and so as my wife commented recently this tank has really gotten very colorful especially now that we brought those black wag red platies see the large one right here in the center uh, in from the pond outside and again the sword plant in this tank is also getting to be quite a show all by itself taking over and I counted before I lost count after I counted 25 leaves on it and so it's uh, doing very well as are the other sword plants here you see the frilly apigenia, I think it is, and uh, also, of course, the Madagascar lace plant, which is now visible now that we move some plants out of the way. One of my favorite plants continues to do well here. And, of course, we have one of those plecos that I'm concerned about getting so big hanging out now in the front. And in the corner tank that you just saw, there's a pleco back there that's probably about 15 inches long. We, we need to trade him in. So you see the serpe here and the cherry barbs. There's a school of about six serpe right there in the center. And there's a, one of the five cherry barbs back here hidden in that plant. They were schooling before. There's the school of a couple of them. All five of them were together earlier. Of course, when I didn't have the camera there. So this tag has gotten quite colorful, but we especially love the planting and the, and the fish. Something new that's been added here, and I'll show you around the side of the tank in just a second. An interesting story. I had somebody write, I have no idea who they were, uh, offering a digital thermometer uh, that you put on the side of the tank and they wanted to get more comments out 
in the review area of like Amazon. And so they said if you uh, would agree to write a review and use it, they would arrange to have it free. Well, free is a good name for me. And uh, they did it very strange because they wanted it to be a verified purchase. And so what they did is they actually repaid what I was going to buy it for on Amazon via PayPal. And so once I got the money from them, I went ahead and ordered it. And you know Amazon, a day later, there you are. And so let's take a quick look at that on the side of this tank. Now I'm not going to, not sure how you're going to see this, but up in the corner, there is a glued on with a sticky bit head behind, a little rectangular transparent thermometer. And so far, it seems to be working very well. I, it's 78.4 degrees in the tank. And I've always had thermometers in the tanks, but I never bother looking at them because they're lost someplace in the tank. And this one is just so visible that you can't help but notice it. So even having it up here only one day, it's amazing to see how effective it can be. And then here down on that end of the tank is another one of those Amazon swords. I don't know if you can count the leaves on this, but this one's got about 20 or more leaves on it also. And doing real well back in the corner here. I have no place else to put it. And so there you get an idea of this bow tank curved in the front. And uh, those ballastinaria, the Italian valves here in the corner. You can see they go all the way up to the top of the tank. And they continue to do very well at either end of the tank. There's that Madagascar lace plant from a different angle. And looking at that Amazon sword, you can see how big it is, especially when you're looking at it from above. And maybe this is a better shot of that colorful plant in the back. And these are some of the platies that came in from the outside pond. And of course down here hidden is a red-tailed shark that is just coming out. Got three of them in this tank and three in the other tank. And then back over here we have a high fin black wag sword tail. Doing very well. It's been around for a long while now. And of course remember those zebras that we talked about? Not as full as they used to be and I'm not sure how many are still here but there's one of them. And there is another one of those sword plants. And here we have the corner tank after a little bit of cleanup. Not much different here. But the fish certainly seem to appreciate the bath in terms of a change of water. Do about a third of a tank at a time. And then I add that fertilizer, the leaf zone, that goes along with the daily dosage of the CO2 booster. What's really interesting here is how big that Amazon sword has become in the center here. It really is a beautiful show plant. And now it's the centerpiece by the way the plants are laid out. And then I also put some of that very colorful plant that we were talking about from the bow tank toward the front here. There's some in the back that you can see right here. And now we've got a little bit in the front too. My wife is especially enamored with the loaches in this tank and they're doing very well, better than we've ever had them do. 
And of course now they've got the camera on, there's none out front to show off. But you can see the neons are out front, which they were hidden in the dark plants before. And then the sword tails that you see up here, there are young ones that have grown up. And so we've got quite a few of them in here that have pineapple sword maybe. So this is a sword tail tank. The longest while I couldn't get sword tails. And uh, over the time we built up quite a collection here. You also will notice those tuxedo platies and they're really growing out very nicely uh, here. Some of them are getting quite big in the couple weeks we've had them in, out here. Making room for them as I said in the office tank for those that came in from the pond. And there's probably or at least a dozen of them in here now. And you can sort of see them getting lost up here in the plant. You'll see a little white dot moving around and if you look closely you'll see the black body behind it. So I'm not sure if you're going to see this much or not. Against that Amazon sword you can see the one here. And here's another one. And here's that beautiful Amazon sword in the corner tank with, again, if you can see the base of it, you can see how many leaves it has. Just amazing. And I've been trimming those leaves off even tonight to get some of the less healthy leaves off there. And so with that, we'll try and cut it short. I also did a major change in the betta tank for the first time. Uh, I've done this with a little cork container, but this time I actually took the hose that I was using on the other tanks and drained this down to about an inch of the white gravel. And it was certainly time to redo it. The water was cloudy, the sides were cloudy, even though I changed it you know, about half each week. And so this is much better now. The fish are happier. It just happened this afternoon. They've adjusted to it. And as you've seen before, the one on the right there just has such beautiful finnage. And the one on the left has got a gorgeous red fin. And you can't quite catch it in the light to really show it off. But anyway, major difference here. Really was able to clean up that gravel and take some of the old leaves out of there. And here comes the red one. Again, it doesn't quite do it justice, but you can get some idea what I've been talking about. And now back here in the office tank, uh, this is where all the babies from the half barrel pond came and you may be able to see because there's bright orange the black wag platy babies that uh, were born out there and have decent size in them. I've lost the uh, cream colored mollies that look so good in here. Uh, there's one male left. I have to go see if I find a mate for him. And so the real ac adult activity in here is some of the guppies, uh, the male guppies you can see up toward the top here, but then you have that very large female sword tail and there's the male right next to her who've been in this tank for quite a while and she's so huge. When she has babies there must be quite a few and uh, there's nothing eating them here so they tend to thrive. And then of course we do have the clown loaches still here. And if I put a, an algae tab in here, you're going to see the activity again. The way I get them to come out for the show. 
and so you see there the tab going down whoops going in the back I'm curious to see what happens now see if they come out or not but this uh, pair of sword tails really have done very well and uh, you can see more activity up here toward the top now of uh, the babies and the young male guppies especially and I've been moving them out to the bigger tank so uh, they've got more space to grow but you can see a lot of the orange babies here now in fact I'm sure if I put a little bit more food in here we'll see a little bit of a feeding frenzy and so let's see what happens now Got some platies in here along with those baby ones. They've grown quite a bit even in the two weeks we brought them in the house. And it was interesting to find uh, Michael's fish videos on YouTube and he has some outdoor uh, bins that he's been raising these guppies in and uh, lo and behold same weekend I took ours in Turns out he's down here in South Jersey, same area, some place where we are. I don't know where he is exactly, but he was talking about the weather that weekend, time to get him in, and he was clearing out the plants and stuff like that. And then lo and behold, he uh, was selling his guppies, uh, male mutts as he called them, five for $25. Uh, and he had a GoPro camera in the water that... Uh, Give you some idea what they look like. I don't know why they were five dollars, but uh, evidently people saw the value in them, and uh, he was able to sell them. I guess. Anyway, you can see the activity down here with the catfish now, the quarries, and so I expect to see the clown loaches out here shortly. There's the two of them in here, as you've seen in the past and uh, I'm not seeing them yet and again we have a showcase Amazon sword in the center of this tank also uh, one of the tall ones like I said the three different sizes in the other tank this is one where those leaves grow the full height of this tank and this tank is about mm, I think it was 26 inches high 28 inches high something like that but you can see the activity there now that they're all coming out to eat the other environments after some time and this, this is a hex tank it's got six sides to it and uh, it's not easy to plant um, the plants are doing well in here they get the same treatment as the others do but uh, it's hard to landscape it as it were the other thing I did I took out one of the fixtures in that bow tank to get me make more room for the roots of the plants and so that's how I got some of those plants replanted someplace other than where they were originally all right I don't see the uh, clown loaches coming out so we're just going to call it a night here and put this together and put it up on YouTube for you hey good fishing out there hope you're enjoying your hobby as much as my wife and I are enjoying the hobby here had some uh, construction guys in the condominium we live in just the other day and uh, always love it when they stop and see the attractive big fish tanks and it's always captivating uh, so it's a uh, nice to see other people react to it so until next time you guys take care all right
I told her when it comes to talking, I'm the sweetest sweet talker in the world. Well, she said.